backwards and run into the wall. Oh, okay, so, okay, what was your question? So how do you tell two variables are named equivalent? Okay, perfect. Okay, so the first thing uh, that we were talking about before we continued recording is that um, the types, we, we don't ever talk about two types being name equivalent because they, here we are defining new types and giving them names. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's the important thing. So clearly they're all going to be not name equivalent because they all have different names. So here we're defining a type T0 that is defined as an int. And here we're defining a type name T2 that's a pointer to a type T0. So type equivalence comes into when we talk about uh, variables and what, uh, what the types of variables are. So if we declare a variable x that is type T0, and then we declare a variable y that's type t0. And I said, can I do x is equal to y in name equivalence? Can I do that? Yes. Yes. Yes, because the type of x has the name t0. And the type of y, when it's declared, has the type t0. So those are the exact names. Are these eternal name equivalent? Wait. And last question. Wait, did you say internal? Internal name oh, equivalents. Um, so are they structurally equivalent? Structurally, yes, right? Yeah. yeah. We already we did it here, right? Boom. Structurally equivalent, name equivalent, are they internal name equivalent? What's the definition of internal name equivalent? <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good thing to learn before the exam on <laughs> Wednesday, I think. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so right now I'm guessing that they're not, but if they were declared on the same line, they would be. So Internal name equivalence is similar to your homework, your project three, where you created the type system, right? You, you probably gave each type some kind of internal name, right? So that internal name gets created when the type is declared. So here we're saying, you can think of the compiler having a bunch of integers to declare all these types. So all the built-in types, int, whatever, are types 0, 1, and 2. And then when it creates new types, it just creates new This is type number three, type number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The point is, these have the same name, so they must have the same internal name to the compiler. Right? So name equivalence means, do they have the exact same name? Right? And internal name equivalence says, would the compiler give them the same name internally? Well, clearly it would give them the same name internally if they have the same name. Right? That's the way things got to work if you have name equivalence. But if they weren't, if they were unassigned, that would be different, correct? So, let's look at this. So. The question was if we, so we create a new type T9, we're defining it as an integer, and we have x is type T0, y is type T9, can I declare x is equal to y under name equivalence? Well, no, because no, they're the same names. Exactly, they have different names. Even though the underlying type is the same, right, to the compiler, so think about it like this, right? Here's where you may want this. What if x is in inches and y is in centimeters? They're both ints to the program, but the programmer has declared, hey, I'm defining a new type uh, called inches that is happens to be implemented in type int, mm -hmm. and I'm defining a new type centimeters that's defining a type int, and now if you're using na name equivalence, you're using that because you don't want to allow that's inches to be, exactly. But they're internally name equivalent, though. No. 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 Different no. definitions. T0 and T9, right? These are two different types. So internally, they're 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 not equivalent. Name, and they're not equivalent. What about structure? They're structurally equivalent. Yeah, structurally, structurally equivalent. definitely equivalent. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I guess I'm still not following because because the so, way it doesn't seem much because you said when they said centimeters and integers at the internally they're defined as ints. Internally, like the compiler would call them. We'll use or, we'll use an int when it sees. Like for the size of the integer for its internal representation. But in name equivalence, when you define a type, you're defining that type as, as an, you don't want it to be equal to something that's not that name. It's yeah, that's, like, that's name equivalence, but that's, yes. not, that's not internal name equivalence. Right. It's internal, like saying you have two fruits, you put them in, in the fridge, those two fruits are technically still two fruits, but when you pull them out, you gave them two different type names, an apple and an orange. Okay. I don't know if that makes it harder. I mean, I, I, I still am stuck on the internal name equivalence part. So we'll see. We'll see. Equivalence. Because so each of these, it's giving a different name to. Because you're defining as a programmer, you are defining different type names. So you think about like when we had T0 and T9 here, right? Yeah. So the compiler has to know internally that those are two different names. Yeah. So they must be internal name 
not equivalent. Yeah. Right? Just like as before, when they had different names, when they had the same name, they were also internal name equivalent. Right? Because the compiler knows internally that they have the same name. Okay. The difference where that comes in, so these are all us defining, giving a type a new name. And we're constructing new types and giving them names. But we can also define anonymous types. So I could define x as, well, I like to use arrays more, but. Right, I'm saying x is an array of integers. And y, array of integers, right? So here I'm defining, I created a new type. Right? This is a type constructor. I'm building up new types based on the basic types that they gave me. So this is a, does this type have a name? Yeah, array of it. No. No, no. Here oh, I gave the types that. names, right? Okay, yeah. Here I called it T0, so T1, T2, T3. Exactly, here I'm, defined, I'm declaring a variable x that has a type array of int that I'm not giving that type a name. Mm -hmm. So it's an anonymous type, it has no name. So when the compiler sees this, it needs to create a variable x and create a new internal name for that variable x because it's a brand new type. Okay. Then when I see this y on another line, I create a new anonymous type that just happens to be implemented as an array of integers. That's the type constructor. So when I say x equal to y, are they name equivalent? Can I do that under name equivalence? Well, so they're still anonymous names, though. So it makes sense to say they're not name internally name equivalent because they're both anonymous types and the compiler can't can't show them but now it doesn't make I, that array of int that looks like the same name but, that but I just said it's anonymous I'm going to have the same name if it's anonymous what does anonymous mean? It doesn't have a name doesn't have a name <laughs> <laughs> right? so can two things that don't have names be name equivalent? no no, no. but the example well, you could do anything right? the examples we have now are no no all we're talking about under name equivalence is name yeah only thing we're focusing on is names. The only thing that matters is the names. Here we're defining types and giving them new names. We're saying, hey, I'm giving this at this pointer to T0 at T2. Bam, that's that name. And here, if you'll notice, we're actually using creating anonymous types in here. Mm -hmm. um, so here, this doesn't have a name. This doesn't have a name. Are they name equivalent? No. No. If they were on the same line, All right, we'll that. that's different. Yes. OK. <laughs> So, they're not name equivalent. Are they internal name equivalent? No. no. No, because exactly, each of these is a different declaration. So these are on different lines. You're declaring different anonymous types on each line. Brand new type. Compiler's never seen this before. It doesn't matter that they are, are they structurally equivalent? Yes, yes but it doesn't matter to the compiler. Okay, they are structurally equivalent. So now the question is, Now the question is, so here I'm defining two variables on the same line. I'm saying variables w and x are both array of ints, and y is an array of ints. So what's the name of the type of w? Doesn't have a name. Doesn't have a name. It's an anonymous type. This type does not have a name. What's the name of x? Doesn't have a name. And the name of y? Doesn't have a name. Perfect. So can I say y is equal to x under name equivalence? No, because technically... Or w, I mean, sorry, w is equal to x. No, because they don't have a name. Exactly, they still don't have a name. Even though they're on the same line, they still do not have a defined name. Exactly. And the same with w, y. Are they structurally equivalent? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What about internal name equivalence? No. Oh wait, no. When I said w equals yeah, x. Yes, yes, because you put them on the same line, right? Exactly. So because there's one, so think of there's one definition of this brand new anonymous function, or anonymous type, right? There's this new anonymous type here that we're creating. And we're saying both w and x have that, have that <laughs> as their type, right? So internally, I have to create some new type alpha and say w and x are both type alpha. 
Now type alpha doesn't have a name, so it's not going to be name equivalent, right? But here, when, we, when I see y, I have to give it a brand new type for this new type array of int. That's this new anonymous type. So I'm the compiler. I need to give it some name. It's got to have a name mm -hmm. or something. I have to have some way to represent it. So I'll say, call it type beta. And I'll say y has type beta. So can I set w is equal to x in internal name equivalence? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So internally is OK. Structurally, it's OK. Exactly. But name, it's not OK. Exactly. Okay. So don't have a name. And this w is equal to y, can you do that with internal name equivalence? No. Exactly. So you have T alpha, T beta, boom, they're different. So the only way to have internal name equivalence when you have anonymous types is to have them on the same line. Exactly. Yep. Um, okay, but if you were to give, so yeah, I think we did talk about this, but just to be clear, mm -hmm. so if you were to give them the same type names like T0 and T0, and they were obviously name equivalent, they'd also be internally named. Exactly. Because that's from here, right? So okay. this is where that type is created. So. Yeah. Cool. So it only it only gets tricky with anonymous exactly. and anonymous types. Yes. Right. Hope I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I remember. I hope I remember. That. I only there is this like concept you've been practicing all your life about how to like uh, prepare and remember things for a test. <laughs> this whole studying thing. Yeah, that's, I'm trying to get away from that though, because like, <laughs> that's what the real world is not like. That. <laughs> uh, that's, that's not true. You still need to study. Just different stuff. All right, thanks. Yeah. Okay. So, I have a separate question. All right. Since everyone's gone, I'm 